Moving on now to queries. So queries are a way in which we can interrogate a database and get information out of it that we need to have. So first thing that we need to do is we do need to create a query. Now there's two ways in which we can create a query. We can use the query wizard or we can use the query design. And I'm going to show you the query design because it lets us get straight into the part of a query where we can not only add the tables that are needed, but we can also add things like the criteria and we can build expressions to make calculations. So I'm going to go into my query design and I'm going to set up a new query. Now, you can either press the add tables button, which might give you a pop up or it might give, give you a panel on this right hand side. Or you can right click and click on show table. It is another way of putting the tables in. So there's many ways that you can put the table in. You can also double click tables, click and drag tables if you've got the pop up or the add tables. Or you can click a table, click add, or you can select multiple tables and click add. So I've added in the adoption records and I've added in the fish table. And if I run this, it will complain at me because what I haven't done, that's not the button I wanted to press. Let's try that again. Um, it will complain at me because I don't have anything in this bottom section. So this bottom section is probably the most important part of building a query because it's in here where we put in firstly what fields we want to show and secondly what we want to search for. Now again there's a number of different ways you can go about actually adding in the fields that you want in your query. You can select it straight from a drop down although that does get a bit confusing. You could go in and select the table first and then select the field which cuts out the confusion of having the table name before having the records. So I'm going to put fish name in there. You can also double click a field that you want to put in. So I've got the fish name, I've got the fish gender and I can put in the adoption cost. Now there's a reason why I've got the adoption records in here and that's because I'm going to use the adoption records to firstly make a count of how many times a fish has been adopted and secondly use that count to calculate the income from the fish. You should only ever have the number of tables that you need in a query. You should never add every single table just because or just in case. You should only ever have the number of tables that you need. And then what we can do from there, if I run this query, I should get five results. I've got one adoption for Bob, two for Dory, and two for Jill in there. And it shows their adoption price, it shows their gender, it shows their name. Now for a simple query, where all we want to do is get a piece or pieces of information out of a database, we use the criteria. And there's two options for the criteria. If we only want one criteria, or we want to check that a match is made for more than one criteria, but that all data matches, we use this criteria row here that I've just highlighted. If we want to check for an all statement, so we want to check one piece of criteria matches or if another piece of criteria matches. So it's not matching both. It's matching one or the other. We use this all row. We can, if we are searching for something, for two pieces of information as an all in one column, put the all statement all on one line in the criteria. We don't have to use the two separate lines. There's nothing to stop us from doing that but we don't have to. So 
let's sort this by gender. And I'm just going to look for the female fish. And my female is represented by a letter F. So I've put speech marks in because I'm looking for text. And I've put F. And then if I now run this query to make sure it's working, Bob has now disappeared because Bob is male. So, so far, so good. We've got this bit working. And now I'm going to make a count because at the moment, if I run this query, we've got two records for Dory and two records for Jill. But what I'm ultimately going to want to do is calculate the amount of income that I get for Dory and the amount of income that I get for Jill. So if I go into view here, what I can actually do, I can put in the fish table and I can put in the fish name. At the moment, that's just going to give me a repetition of this first field. And that's not what I want. So I need to show an extra bit of information that is hidden in a basic query. And that is this totals. And when I press on that, it gives you this new line. Tell us the total at the start. And everything is by default set to group by. So group by is your normal, I don't need to do anything special setting. So you only need to change the group by if you want to do something special. So I want to do a count of the number of records for each fish name. So I've got the fish name selected. And then on this drop down, there is actually an option that says count. And if I change that to count and I run this query now, Dory and Jill only show up once. But we now have a count of fish name, both of which are showing two because there's two adoptions for Dory and two adoptions for Jill. So far, so good. And this is a good time to save your query. So query underscore fish underscore income. What is query underscore income actually? What you do need to do is make sure that your naming convention remains the same. So I've got underscores in all of these. My tables have TBL at the start. This is a query, so it's got QRY. And then I've got my underscore, I've got my table, I've got my query name. Before I took it out, I had underscore fish underscore income. So I still had the same naming convention using those underscores. And I can click OK on that. And now my query has appeared over here because I've got it saved. So what I need to do now is I need to calculate the amount of income I get for each fish. And this is where it gets slightly different because we don't want to select this information from the tables. We want to calculate this. So I want to click in the field, but I don't need the drop down. I just need to select the field. And then I want to go to Builder. And once I've gone into Builder, this has brought up all of the field names that I've got along here. And because this last one is a count of the fish names, it's actually put count of fish name here. And when it comes to doing the exam, you'll have to work out what math you need depending on what they ask of you in the query. But to calculate the income, for a particular record, fish adoption cost, because I need to calculate the income by knowing how much each fish costs. And then I want to multiply it by the count of fish name. And that is the expression. When I click OK on that, I get this field nicely filled in. And what we can do and what you should be doing is just extending this so you can see everything in that field. Now, the EXPR1, you can take out. You need to leave the semicolon that's after the one, but you can take that out because this is what will show as your field name. So I'm going to change this to income. 
or my field name. The other bit you need to change is this is no longer a group by field. It's an expression. So we need to put expression as our total. And what should happen now when I run the query? We've got all the fields we had before. And now we've got an income field. And that has multiplied the count of our number of fish. So Dory has two entries. And we've multiplied that by the amount it costs to adopt the fish. And because it's only two, it's nice and easy. Two times 25 is 50. Two by 15 is 30. So we can see from this simplified, nice and simple version, that that has worked as we want it. Now, it might be that we don't want to show all of the information in a query. So this brings us to this row with the tick boxes in, which is show. And I'm going to take this. So I don't actually want it to show the gender. I don't want it to show the cost of the adoption either. I just want it to show the name of the fish, the count of how many times that fish has been adopted, and the income from that fish. So I've unticked those boxes. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to sort this into alphabetical order. And I can do that from the sort. You only get, we well, get three options. You get not sorted, where it will just show in whatever order the data has been entered in. You can set it to ascending order, which would be starting at A, going through to Z, or starting one, then going two, three, four, five, up until whatever your last number may be. Or you can sort it descending, which would be Z to A, or whatever your top number is, all the way down through till one, or zero, if there's a zero, depending on what it is you're sorting. So I'm going to sort sort this by my fish name. I'm going to sort it to ascending. Now we've got Dorian, we've got Jill. So technically it was already sorted in ascending order based on this. So if I run this query, apart from the missing fields, <clears throat> we don't see anything different. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to put this into descending order. So Jill should now be in front of Dory. And if I run the query. We've now got Jill ahead of Dory. Usually, if something is to be sorted in descending order, it will say descending or reverse. Generally speaking, unless it specifically says it wants a descending order or a reverse order, ascending order should be assumed. And that is how you would go about setting up a simple query where you don't have anything outside of these first three. And a more complex query using counts and using an expression to create a sum, to create a total of each of those rows.